because we don't have a, just the basic sense of which God in the beginning and God made them male and female. So we don't we don't we don't understand why we're here, what we're made for. We put all the women in roles that God's designed for men, and then we get all the men and we're trying to put them in the roles that God's designed for women. And the end result is that we're doing all of it badly. And and you can just look at our society and we're just tearing it all down because we don't know what we're doing anymore. Warning, the following message may be offensive to some audiences. These audiences may include, but are not limited to, professing Christians who never read their Bible, sissies, sodomites, men with man buns, those who approve of men with man buns, man bun enablers, white knights for men with man buns, homemakers who have finished Netflix but don't know how to meal plan, and people who refer to their pets as fur babies. Viewer discretion is advised. People are tired of hearing nothing but doom and despair on the radio. The message of Christianity is that salvation is found in Christ alone. And any who reject Christ, therefore, forfeit any hope of salvation, any hope of heaven. The issue is that humanity is in sin, and the wrath of Almighty God is hanging over our head. They will hear his words, they will not act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment, when the fires of wrath come, they will be consumed and they will perish. God wrapped himself in flesh, condescended, and became a man, died on the cross for sin, was resurrected on the third day, has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he sits now to make intercession for us. Jesus is saying there is a group of people who will hear his words, they will act upon them, and when the floods of divine judgment come in that final day, their house will stand. Welcome to Bible Bash, where we aim to equip the saints for the works of ministry by answering the questions you're not allowed to ask. We're your hosts, Harrison Kerrigan, and Pastor Tim Mullet, and today we'll answer the age-old question, if someone acts gay, should you believe them? Uh, now, this is one of those sort of phenomenon that I think, Tim, we've all experienced, especially the guys, but I think all people recognize this. Um, you know, there are certain people you meet that when you hear the tone of their voice and you see the way that they hold their hands and the way that they dress, you immediately think to yourself, that dude's gay. Right. Right. Have you, have you had this experience before? Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so every, everyone's had this experience, but then I think we're kind of at a point now socially, um, you know, where you're just really not allowed to uh, admit that. Right. right. Unless you're saying, unless you're saying like, Oh, you unless don't know. You're, unless you're saying, you know, hey, you're gay, but but you're trying to say it in a good, as if it's a good thing, right? Like, oh, right. you're gay, you, you know, <laughs> then you might be allowed to talk about it then. But, you know, for uh, for us normal people, it's like, a, oh, that dude's gay. <laughs> so, so the question then becomes why, you know, why is that such a consistent thing when, you know, I mean, People are all different. You, you would assume that just because someone has decided that they're going to transgress against God and they're going to reject the natural order of things doesn't mean inherently that they have to talk with a really high-pitched voice. Yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously, um, it doesn't follow. And, you know, it's obviously one of those things where you, everyone knows that when it, when a man talks like adopts the mannerisms of a woman and you know the hand gestures of a woman and the the dressing and all that kind of stuff that doesn't follow you know that like the the being flamboyant the being flaming you know flaming homosexual kind of mannerisms that doesn't logically follow from um like if this is just some kind of you know alternative orientation or something like that, like that doesn't naturally naturally follow. But then what's what's actually happening is you have men who are taking the role of a woman. They're taking on the role of the woman, and so they intentionally act out that role because yeah. they're reflecting what they're doing as you know as far as those things are concerned. But then the issue is they don't actually have to do that. They don't have to actually speak that way and act that way. At all, right? <laughs> and right. they don't. I mean, often, um, I, I, I mean, I've been around like closet, you know, quote unquote, homosexuals or whatever in my life. And I've been around them and I've seen that they, 
they can act really straight when they want to, and then when they're in other situations, they turn on the the, the flamboyant. Flame. Yeah, they turn on the <laughs> flame, the jazziness, you know, <laughs> and they go full jazz hand mode, you know, and uh, it gets really que- creepy really quick. Uh, but you know, it, so a lot of it is largely a game that they're playing, and they're they're communicating certain things about it. And then what's happened is that. You know, you're living in a culture and society right now that you're just not really allowed to make any assumptions about what's happening in these kind of moments. So you can have someone who's just totally flamboyant and acting like a woman, adopting all the mannerisms of a woman. And what you're not really allowed to do is just believe what they're communicating, right? So this is a way that, um, I mean, essentially what this is, is this is a way that a sodomite will advertise that he's open for business, so to speak. Uh, but then what's happening is you have like society basically rigorously policing you at that point and saying you're not really allowed to conclude anything from it. You know, I mean, maybe he just grew up with a bunch of sisters, man. Like, you don't know. <laughs> Who knows what it means? <laughs> and so you're not really allowed to draw any conclusions from it one way or another. Yeah. You know, I, I was watching, uh, I, I was spending some time with my wife the other day, and she had been watching some show, um, it's some sitcom, you know, and, and so I sat down and I was watching it with her. Something I, you know, I've not seen a single, I don't know a single thing about this show. I don't know any of the characters. I don't know what's going on. It's like the middle of a season. And they show this one character who is in, incredibly flamboyant, you know, and, <clears throat> um, and my first thought there is like, he's for sure gay in every way, like the most gay the gayest of all gays he is he is that you know and and uh, <laughs> it's like even even on the even on you know the tv shows where things can all be fake like nothing there's you know, it doesn't have to be real in any way they also portray this this idea that you know the guy the guy who is attracted to other men you know who's living in sin in this way he is going, you know, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be very flamboyant. He's going to have a certain tone of voice. And so you, you, it's, it's weird to think about where you have like this, this actor who's getting paid and for sure getting coached. I mean, all these guys are getting coached. You have the directors, the producers, you have all these people who are pouring into this thing and they're being very meticulous with all of these details and they're, so you, when you think about that, it's like they are for sure telling this guy to speak, you know, like a woman <laughs> to speak the gay way, the gay way yep. <laughs> right? And and so, so I mean that ought to, that enough that should ought to be enough to tell you, hey, whatever this whatever this is, it's very real and it's very common. I th- I think you know just about everyone understands what's going on, um, you know, so. So essentially, it's essentially what you're saying is, hey, uh, you know, they're being this flamboyant because they're trying to act like women. Is is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, I mean, it's I mean, this is um, this is what happens when you reject the natural function of a woman. But how how does that make any sense? Like, think about it. If you're if you're if you're a dude who's attracted to other guys, why are you making yourself act like a woman? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? So it's a perversion. <laughs> it's a perversion. <laughs> so what you have is you have a perversion of the natural order, right? So people are so uh-huh. inexplicably like tied to the natural order, the way that God made it. That I mean, that's essentially what you have happening, right? So, I mean, you can think about what happens in like lesbian relationships. Is you have like the one the one girl who gets entirely butch and then the other one who's entirely feminine or whatever. Yeah. You have the normal looking one and the butch looking one. Right. Right. And then the same thing is happening, you know, on the gay side of things too. Right. So everyone, they're, they're basically, you just have people who are acting out their roles, but I mean, it is, it is an interesting thing. I mean, I remember when uh, the big bang theory came out, like first came out or whatever. Someone was asking me if I wanted to watch it. I'm like, no, I don't want to watch a bunch of gay people on this show. <laughs> and they rebuked me, man. They rebuked me thoroughly. They said, they're not gay. You know, they're, they're like the, and I was like, 
like the characters are not gay or whatever. It's like, yeah, they act gay though. Like I don't want to watch act like a bunch of gays. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then come to find out, you know, the Sheldon guy or whatever, he actually is gay in real life. <laughs> but his character wasn't gay, you know. So I was being rebuked for not like for my gaydar going off, you know. Uh-huh. And, uh, and it's like, no, I don't want to. I don't really care to watch this show. But then, I mean, this one of the things that's funny about this topic is over the course of my life. Almost every single time you look at a guy and he's acting like this, he's acting like this. And then everyone around you, it's like, Hey, you know, is he, you know, is he one of those, <laughs> is he a sodomite or, or whatever? And everyone, you can't know that, you know, you shouldn't even ask that, you know, and they get all puritanical on you and like upset with you. And it's like, but he seems like it, you know, and then come to find out years later. Uh, yeah, he was the whole time. <laughs> and, yeah. And that's yeah. just kind of been my experience throughout this topic. I, I mean, just, it's just been over and over and over and over again. And and it's like, everyone is just committed to this proposition that you can't really, you, like you have a guy who's acting like a woman and you can't really draw any inferences from it whatsoever because you can't possibly know. So as Christians, yeah. Should, should we make those assumptions about people or is it unbiblical? Were they <laughs> right? Were they right in chastising you or, or is it perfectly, or is it perfectly fine, you know, to, look at a person and say, oh, that person's for sure gay. <laughs> so well, well, the, <laughs> the issue is that there's different ways to communicate. There's different, there's different ways to communicate. So you can communicate in a different, in, in different ways. So like if you were to see a lady standing on the street corner at a certain time of night, at a certain location, certain kinds of street corners and, you know, dressed up in a certain manner, right? <laughs> yeah. And they're in, in the red light district, you know, so I, I would I mean, assume she's, you know, going for a midnight stroll. Just a midnight stroll. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like you read through the Bible, one of the things you read through the Bible and you have the young man who, you know, the woman is dressed like a prostitute. It says she's, she's dressed like a prostitute and she's inviting him, you know, to, she's perfumed her bed and her husband's not there and everything else. He's like an ox to the slaughter. So like the issue is like you can read these kind of passages over and over again in the Bible and they know what a prostitute dresses like. You you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that you know what a prostitute dresses like. Like they, you know what they act like. You know the way that they the mannerisms that they adopt. So um like and as you look in the Bible you're going to find that people identified the prostitute. So like Judah Judas sees a prostitute on the side of the road. He knows she's a prostitute. He approaches her as a prostitute. That's what he did, right? Because she's she knows how to communicate that she's available for this thing, right? So Tamar knew she put on the garb of a prostitute. She played the role of a prostitute. And then Judah took her up on the offer. That's the way it worked, right? And so no one in that kind of situation is making the wrong assumption there. Like you, If you want to dress like a prostitute, there's a definable thing that you do. And everyone knows what it is. And I don't even have to elaborate on it. You know what it is. You know you know what it is when you see it. You put on your prostitute outfit and you put on your prostitute mannerisms, right? And and everyone knows what that is. Like everyone knows what that is. So like because you know how to communicate certain things, right? Like if I want to, like if, if a guy were to want to um, communicate that he's a KKK member, KKK has an outfit that you can wear <laughs> to yeah. put on that, that everyone would know here is this outfit and here's what it looks like. And this is that costume, right? So there's different costumes you can wear. There's different outfits you can wear. So you can communicate in a wide variety of ways. You can communicate through the costume that you wear. Everyone knows what the gay costume looks like. You know what it looks like. I mean, if you were to get a lineup of a hundred gay guys and a lineup of a hundred straight guys, and you put them side by side, right? Yeah. So dress like you, you know, dress like you're going to the club, gay guy, right? <laughs> to the gay club. And then, you know, guys dressing like they're going to go to the club. You put them there. I mean, you could, you could guess it right about 99, 95% of the time at the very least, right? You could get yeah. it right. And so like the issue is there's costumes that are part of this. There's mannerisms that are part of this. The, the Bible just goes into detail describing like the mannerisms of a prostitute. The same thing happened. I, so the, the, the issue is like you can communicate through your outfit. You can communicate through your mannerisms. And at a certain point, you can't blame people for 
believing you, right? Like if you want to, if you want to dress like a homo and you want to act like a homo and all that, and people, people should believe what you're saying because you're, and then if you're going to like say, Hey, you know, you can't possibly know. It's like, well, I, I don't know what language, like, what are we doing anymore? So, I mean, most of communication really is nonverbal anyways, right? (laughs) So like there's all sorts of mannerisms. There's all sorts of things that a person can do the way that they walk. And like, I mean, and the Bible goes into great detail describing even how like women walk. Um, so, I mean, you can read through the prophets and see like women like min- min- mincing around as they walk or whatever, right? Uh, uh, like everyone knows how a woman walks. You know how a woman walks. You know how a woman walks when she wants to walk in a ne- in an exaggeratedly feminine way. You like, So the issue is that like there's all sorts of things that we can communicate. And what we've done is we've gotten to this point in society where you're only allowed to like like in certain in certain topics and certain subjects, you're basically put in this box where you have to say, "I ha- I can't think about all the other different ways communication happens. I only have to wait for this literal phrase to happen that where the individual comes out or or whatever, right, and says that they are right. what they are. And so during that whole t- like the issue is like they all know who they are, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had a guy like this who worked at a restaurant that we worked at past and, you know, he, he pretended to not be gay for years and years and years, but everyone knew that he was a sodomite. Everyone knew he was because he just acted like one and, and, you know, and then what would happen is you'd have like the, you know, the sodomite guys who would come into the restaurant that he worked at or whatever that everyone yeah. worked at and they would all say, yeah, we know him. You know, <laughs> It's because he's been advertising, you know, what he is. And just because he's not ready to let anyone know about it, that doesn't mean that they, they don't all know who he is. And so, I mean, and that's really what's happening is it's just, it's a way of basically advertising your availability to everyone around you that, Hey, I'm open to this. Um, but then, it, it, but then you also have like the shield of society to where, you know, you, you're not really allowed to comment on it because then, you know, what happens is it's, it's the same kind of thing that's happening with that guy, the pastor guy who came out as a cross dresser or whatever, or who got um, um, the, the news story who told on him. Then, like, you know, tragically, he kills himself, right? So he kills himself after that. And then it's, well, society's fault for, you know, uncovering his secret that he wasn't ready to reveal or something like that. And so yeah, what you have is yeah. you're in a society like that where basically like you have individuals who are engaging in this perversion behind the scenes and then they're basically just rubbing it all in your face and then basically like saying, Hey, you can't like, I know I'm doing everything possible to communicate to everyone around me. That this is exactly what I am, but you're not allowed to, recognize it right <laughs> you're not allowed right. to call me on it and so it's just basically kind of like an in-your-face way of showing who you are without any kind of repercussions that come from it basically so what is the you know, as christians what is the you know benefit to recognizing that there are patterns here and that there is you know there is merit to believing the pattern <laughs> What, what's, what is the merit? I mean, you might not want to let that guy babysit your kids. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you may <laughs> Step one, don't let them around your kids. I mean, so are you allowed to, I mean, Sam Albury wouldn't really want you to say that kind of thing, but I mean, are, are you, what, what, are, what kind of inferences are you allowed to draw from that? Right. So, I mean, think about it the opposite way. Like if a, if a woman is constantly dressing provocatively, constantly, you know, dressing provocatively, constantly trying to do the things that women do to entice people and to like, would you to want to get attention? Yeah. And to get attention. I mean, would you want her around your kids? No. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like if it were a young woman like that, who's constantly doing that, who is like in the language that we're not allowed to say anymore is just communicating to everyone around her that she's easy. Right. Would you want her hanging out with your kids? No, I don't, I don't want my kids to see that or think that's okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like the issue is like, like when you're talking about this, this kind of thing, like 
there are consequences to, I mean, I mean there, there's consequences to these kind of things in, in that kind of way. And so, I mean, obviously um, that's part of it. I mean, part of it is just like a basic, um, hey, if you're going to communicate that you're engaging in high hand sexual rebellion against your maker, then, you know, there's extra safeguards that we're going to put in our interaction with you because you're communicating uh, perversion in that way. But I mean, I, do, I mean, you also, I mean, one of the most loving things you can do is call people like that to repentance and not allow them to live in the shadows. Right. So the Bible says, take no part in them in fruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them, uh, bring them to light. So part of the importance of even having a conversation like this is just to say that you have individuals who are, you know, taking part in these unfruitful works of darkness behind the scenes and then they're rubbing it all in everyone's face. And then they're basically with a demand that you can't recognize what's happening. But at that point, no one's really calling them to repentance, even though it's obvious what's happening in those moments. And so, you know, so a lot of that is just, uh, yes, these are flags. These are flags that they're given to communicate their availability to members of the same sex. But then they're also, it's just straight up sinful acts in itself. I mean, it's sinful to act like a woman if you're a man. And, you know, society does have a vested interest in rebuking that and trying to call those kind of individuals to repentance uh, because it does affect us all for sure. Yeah. So, so why don't we talk about that some, you know, so it's one thing, you know, it's one thing to say, Hey, the, these actions are communicating, um, you know, the fact that there's something deeper going on here. Right. So, so you you have a certain tone of voice, you have certain mannerisms that you use or mannerisms that you use, you dress a, a certain way, you have certain friends, right. That sure. we all, you know, we all, um, can see what's going on here, but then it seems like it's another thing to say like, Hey, not just the fact that, you know, those, those mannerisms and whatnot are an, a red flag telling us about this deeper issue but even the red flags are sin in and of themselves so why don't we talk about that where, where are you getting that idea from that you know that it, it's sinful to even you know uh purposely pursue a higher pitched voice for yeah. example yeah i mean the bible says be strong be courageous act like men <laughs> In other words, don't act like women, right? Don't act like women. So, I mean, but the issue, so the issue is the Bible tells men to act like men and then acting like men is a definable thing and acting like a woman is a definable thing. And we all know the difference between the two of these things. We just, we pretend in these moments that we have no idea what's actually happening. Well, Tim, don't you know that in this obscure African tribe that I'm not going to tell you the name of right now because I don't know the name of it and I don't know that it actually exists, that the men actually do speak in a higher pitched voice and that is considered manly in that african tribe that i will not name and will not look up for you right now there you go so the irrefutable proof all right <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on moving on nothing to say to that um no so like the issue it, well i mean obviously if you want a response to that <laughs> I mean, all cultures are not created equal some cultures uh, think that it's okay to cannibalize the people and sacrifice them on you know stone altars in order to appease the gods and all that so yeah i mean there's a lot of um not all cultures are the same here but i mean you think about like what's actually happening with these with these things in general i mean the bible does say that a woman shouldn't wear a garment pertaining to a man and a man shouldn't wear a garment pertaining to a woman so you, the clothes you wear are communicating certain things like there's different ways you can communicate you can communicate like you like so Cross-dressing in the Bible is sin, is depravity, is considered an abomination. So, but then the issue is like, all right, that's one way of communicating. So you can communicate with your words certain things, and you can communicate with your dress certain things. And the Bible would say that if a man wears a garment pertaining to a woman, he is a, he is a, like, that's an abomination. That's like terrible, right? Yeah. So yeah. like the issue is like, well, what's wrong with it is God, in the beginning, God made men and women different right they're different kinds of cre creatures and so god's putting that there there's a standard of dress right there like there's a standard of dress right there to say that hey if you're if i made you a man and you're presenting yourself in your dress as a woman 
you are doing something fundamentally wicked and depraved, right? Because you're seeking to blur these gender lines. You're not living up to your created design, your created function. Like this is perversity, right? So that's true as far as dress goes. But then that's also true as far as just things like even hairstyles. And we've talked about this in different episodes, but God God says that nature itself teaches that it's shameful for a man to have long hair. So if you're going to present yourself in certain clothing, like the clothing of a woman, the hair of a woman, the Bible says that's sin, that's wickedness. You're blurring these gender lines. So the same thing is happening with like your mannerisms. Like that's just, you're doing like, you're doing the same exact thing right there. Like that's just like, like, uh, the verbal equivalent of transgenderism or cross-dressing, right? Like that's what, that's what you're doing. It's all the same kind of thing. So God says, act like men, be strong. Um, like you should act, if you're a man, God made you a man, you should act like a man. And what that, what is that, what that's going to involve is not to adopt the, the mannerisms, the habits, the, you know, verbal way of communicating that is standard to a woman. You're going to think about the natural created differences and you're not just going to try to blur those lines. So that in itself, I mean, yes, that's just perversity. You're doing the same kind of thing in different ways. And that's why, you know, when a sodomite comes along and he's he he is playing, like he's physically playing the role of the woman in the relationship. And so that's what he's going to act like, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it is interesting that the, um, you know, out, out of all of the different sins that the Bible lists you know throughout the old testament throughout the new testament that um you know that men dressing like women and women dressing like men is one of the few sins that god calls an abomination when our society right now would say like there's no big deal what what's the big deal right right so so what so why is it that that's you know because because when when our society looks at at some dude that is attracted to other men and they see the way he dresses and he, and he dresses very effeminately. He acts very effeminately. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to bat an eye at it. They're not going to question it. They're not going to think that's weird. They're not, they're just going to think, yeah, that's normal. Um, so, so why is it that God calls it an abomination, but we think it's normal you know, not you and I, but our society thinks it's normal. Yeah, we don't understand the difference between men and women. So, I mean, what, what think about it this way. Like, if if there's anything in the minds of many people, like if there's anything left, you know, like if you think about gender differences, so God's made men and women different. If you can think about any gender differences, that, that about the only thing that most people would agree is an actual legitimate gender difference is the the fact that a lady can make a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Not even you know, not even physical strength anymore, really. Yeah. If you, but that's about it, okay? That's about it. And that's I mean, you still even have the insanity that's gripped so many people now that we're calling them birthing persons, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of women. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not all women have j- vaginas, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, of, yeah. But 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 imagine this. So think about this thought experiment for a second, because people don't have an answer to the question that you're asking. But it's not a complicated, like thought experiment to think through. So think about it this way: like, imagine if the entire society like revolved around men trying to pretend like they would have babies. What would happen? We'd all die. We'd all we'd die. die off. We'd die off as a society. <laughs> the human race, and it, and it would be so fast. It, <laughs> it wouldn't even take it. It would take a generation, and we'd all die yeah. off, right? So, like the issue is that nature doesn't lie, right? Nature doesn't lie. Uh, so, like, so here's the di- here's the deal. That's one gender difference that is very pronounced. And the moment, like, if if we were to basically just have women on wholesale say, hey, I'm not going to give make babies anymore, right? Like we're doing. I mean, if if the transgender revolution just like utterly captivated the entire world, I mean, the end w- result would be just we would die off as a species, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. because like if everyone went this route, then what would happen is you'd have a bunch of men LARPing as if they're moms. And then you'd have like, what are you going to do, right? Like, and, and I mean, even in the news right now, there, you know, you have... Um, proposals that are being made to take brain dead mothers and use their wombs for the service of these, you know, perverts essentially. 
Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's laws that are, I think there was a California law that was trying to be passed that would basically make it a right for, a right for two, you know, sodomites to have access to a woman's body for surrogacy or something along those lines. And so, yeah, which is so backwards, man. Like y'all, y'all keep claiming y'all are the people championing women's rights. And then you're, you're, te- you're basically enslaving women to gay men, to gay men. Yeah. So, but now think about it. All right. Think about it though. Think about what would actually happen if you like go full out with it. Like these men are all pretending like they're having babies. They can't have babies. That's not the way the world works. And the women are stop having babies. Now, Right, that's the one area where we recognize a gender difference. The problem is that there are other areas that have gender differences. Okay, and so like if World War Three starts, what do you what do you think is going to happen when you have as many soft men as what you've made? Like, do you think that like all these soft men that you've created who have adopted all the mannerisms of women, women, the emotional stability of women? Like, I mean, think about all the you know, the gay men that you've known in your life or whatever, think about all of them and then think about how they act and think about like the, you know, I've, I've known, (laughs) I've known, I've known men like that and they, they're frequently reduced to tears, like over the fact that not enough people are going to the birthday party that they're throwing for themselves and everything else. (laughs) It's ridiculous, man. But I mean, so imagine like God's made men strong in order to, be warriors and, and other things. All right, so World War Three stop starts. What what is going to happen? Like what's going? Like our society is like easy pickings at this point, <laughs> because uh-huh. we've so emasculated our men that we wouldn't even know what to do. You know, the terrorists come in here to behead us all, and then we all just reduce to a blubbering mess of tears because it's just so mean, and we can't imagine how they how they would do it. So, like the idea is that God God's made men and women different, and there's so many different ways that you can play this out okay so the differences are more pronounced than just simply women can make babies men can't there god's designed men to lead god's made men different than women he's given them strengths and so then if you take men and then you you take all of your men you have them adopt all the mannerisms the habits the temperament the everything of a woman what you're what you're left with is an utter deficit of men because and and so then the issue is you all you have to think about is like well what what did God design men for to do, right? What did he design men to do? And if you have all of your women, your men playing the role of women, <laughs> then you're going to, you basically have half a gender <laughs> that, that exists in the world. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, so then, yeah. then what you have is you have, uh, you, you only have half a gender when God designed two genders to accomplish different purposes. And so part of the problem is you just, it, the more you understand about the differences between men and women, the more you see that, yeah, this is a this is a recipe for utter destruction and disaster. You know, not just in the sense that God's going to act in judgment on it like he did the Sodomites in the story, right? Like that's true too. But we're you can look at us and you see that we're literally destroying ourselves <laughs> in this in every single way imaginable. We're killing our right. children, we're killing killing our offspring, we're literally destroying ourselves, and we don't even know what we're doing. We're just because we don't have like just the basic sense to which God into being in and God made them male and female. So we don't, we don't, we don't understand why we're here, what we're made for. We put all the women in roles that God's designed for men. And then we get all the men and we're trying to put them in the roles that God's designed for women. And the end result is that we're doing all of it badly. And, and you can just look at our society and we're just tearing it all down because we don't know what we're doing anymore. Right. Yeah. And so like, this is the logical result of, men acting like women and women acting like men you can just look at our society you see that's what's happening and that's why it's so bad and then when you understand that then you realize that oh yeah god wasn't playing when he said this right (laughs) so basically what i hear you to say is gaydar is biblical and it protects us that's right yeah amen (laughs) okay well i think that's a good place for us to wrap up the conversation on and and, you know, and speaking about a phenomenon that we all know, we've all been there, but then for some reason, our society demands that you not acknowledge that it's there unless, unless you're going to, you know, come to the re- the revelation that this person is gay. And that is just the greatest thing in the entire world when it, when in reality it's sin, um, you know, so 
a very strange, a very strange phenomenon, but, but it does make a lot of sense that, you know, what you're saying about why they're behaving a certain way and, and, you know, why it's such a big deal. Um, because, because, you know, you're kind of joking about the whole, like, Hey, if everyone stops having babies, then it, you know, it takes one generation, maybe two generations before society just completely and totally collapses. And, you know, yeah, you know, maybe everyone's not going to, um, you know, jump on, you know, everyone's not going to instantly become gay overnight and attracted to the same sex and refuse to have babies. But then the more and more a society leans into those things, the fewer babies are had every year. And I mean, it, it, you know, we keep talking about a population problem. Uh, you know, there's too many people on the earth and whatnot, but then it only takes a few generations of people not having enough, enough babies for society to collapse. I mean, uh, you know, that, that's an issue that several Asian countries are experiencing right now, uh, because they, they have not harbored, um, a culture of having more children to replace, you know, to replace the older generations as they die off. And so, so you might kind of scoff at that problem, <clears throat> but it is a real problem and it doesn't take long to rear its ugly head in and, and for society and everything that we've grown up with and grown accustomed to just completely disappearing before our eyes because, uh, you know, really, um, you know, as a form of judgment from God, because we as a society have rejected his ways and assumed that we know somehow know better than him. So, so this is certainly a very pressing conversation that needs to be had. And it has a lot to do with, you know, when we're sharing the gospel with people, I mean, Jesus was constantly going straight for people's people's biggest sins. I mean, he, he wasn't getting coffee for six months and then, you know, maybe finally working in, up enough courage to address the elephant in the room. He was, he was going straight for the jugular with those, you know, with his conversations. And if someone, you know, if you meet someone and they're flaming, it's time to tell them to repent of their sins and put their faith and trust in Christ. And they need to stop, you know, like, Hey, Hey, you seem pretty gay. Are you gay? Yeah. You got to stop, <laughs> you know, and, and you've got to be able to say those things and, and have boldness to say those things the same way Christ did. Um, because we know that that's the most loving thing that we can actually do for those people is to plead with them to repent of their sins and realize that what they're doing is leading to their own destruction. So with all that being said, uh, we appreciate all the support that you guys give us week in and week out and interacting with us online. You can follow us on Twitter, on Facebook. There's links to that down in the description below. And, uh, and if you want to support us, you can do that by leaving a comment liking the video on YouTube, subscribing to our YouTube channel uh, or our podcast, wherever you listen and leaving a five star review there, uh, because those are all really helpful for us. Those those really do. I mean, they they do a surprising amount, honestly, to get us out there, get us in the algorithm, get it where more people see us. And it, and it doesn't cost anything for you guys other than a few seconds to leave it, you know, type the comment or whatever it is. So. Uh, you, if you want to support us, you can support us that way. If you want to support us financially, there's a link to our Patreon down below in the description. And we certainly appreciate any financial support you want to show to us. And until the next episode, we'll see. This has been another episode of Bible Bashed. We hope you have been encouraged and blessed through our discussion. We thank you for all your support and ask you to continue to like and subscribe to Bible Bashed and share our podcast with your friends and on social media. Please reach out to us with your questions, pushback, and potential topics for us to discuss in future episodes at BibleBashedPodcast at gmail.com and consider supporting us through Patreon. If you would like to be Bible Bashed personally, then please know that we also offer free biblical counseling, which you can take advantage of by emailing us. Now, go boldly and obey the truth in the midst of a biblically illiterate world who will be perpetually offended by your every move.